Um, so I'm Lindsay Hastings. I am a CMC member and an ice climber on the USA ice climbing team. Um, and let's see, today I'm just going to tell you kind of how, how I got here. Um, I've never really been a professional athlete by any means. Um, so it's kind of fun to share that story um, and just kind of tell you what it's like to compete on the team um, and travel around the world. Um, and I want it to be interactive, so feel free to jump in with any questions that you guys have at any time. Um, so, yeah, I'll get started and we can do a little question and answer at the end. And bear with me, I do Zoom meetings all the time, um, but I've never been like the one really sharing my screen and typing. Um, and if you have questions, feel free to uh, type in the chat and those will pop up and then I can address those there. Um, you can unmute too and kind of talk to, but whatever works best for you guys. Um, let's see. All right, share screen. All right, so this is the CMC Online University. Um, this is the first session, so thanks to the CMC for having me. I'm really excited. Um, so let's jump right in. Uh, I wish I could say I've been climbing my whole life. Uh, I think this photo was from when I was like seven or something. Um, as you can see, I'm wearing flip flops. I'm on top rope, I'm at like a fair or something, uh, but I've not been climbing my whole life. I was actually a cheerleader for most of my life. Um, sorry, this picture looks like it was taken with a potato. Uh, it's from 2010. Um, so that's kind of my background. I grew up cheerleading and doing gymnastics um, and finally discovered rock climbing just four years ago. Uh, so here's a photo from my first uh, day rock climbing. Uh, I've got all rented gear. I'm wearing socks with my climbing shoes. I don't have a helmet on. I'm not even climbing a real route. Don't totally know what's going on. Um, but it just stuck with me. I really enjoyed it. I liked the social aspect. Um, I liked getting outside, you know, but prior to that, I wasn't really an outdoorsy person. Um, this was kind of my first foray into the outdoors. Um, so kind of just got hooked from there. So that was four summers ago. And I like saw some people ice climbing. I'd seen some pictures of it, seen it in magazines. Um, and it just, it looked like something I really wanted to try. I've always, you know, I grew up in Minnesota, and so being cold, you know, didn't bother me. Um, so fast forward a little bit, grew up in New or Minnesota, I moved to New Mexico about three years ago, and I was at a, a, a benefit a rest, for the Albuquerque Search and Rescue Team, um, and they were having a silent auction. Um, so I entered the silent auction and won a guided ice climbing trip. Um, it was, you know, kind of after a few beers, and I was like, oh, that, you know, that looks like something I want to try, um, and it was a very good price, and so that was three winters ago now, um, so I won this trip, and, uh, you know, went on my guided ice climbing trip in year A, and just totally fell in love with it, uh, bought all the gear immediately, um, and started doing some steeper climbs, some taller climbs, kind of just still in the ice park, nothing really in the backcountry. Um, but it just felt like something that kind of clicked for me. Um, you know, I never really was taught how to do it. It just kind of, it made sense. And I think, you know, that cheerleading background, the gymnastics background, you know, having like that body awareness and the core strength, I think that kind of played into that. Um, so, you know, as I realized that this was something that I was maybe kind of good at, uh, I also realized I was kind of fast at it too. Uh, I go climbing with people and I'm like, why are they taking so long? Like what, what's going on? Like just, just go, you know? Um, so I went to an ice climbing festival in Minnesota. Uh, my first season ice climbing, it was like a month or two after I had just swung my tools for the first time. And there was a speed ice climbing competition. Um, I just entered it for fun. Like I'd never really tried intentionally climbing fast, um, but I figured it was fun. Might as well try it, see how it goes. So this is a photo from my first speed ice climbing competition. Um, the costume, Captain Thunder Pants, that's kind of a story for later. Um, but so this is a photo from my first competition. I ended up taking third place um, and I didn't think anything of it. You know, it was a small competition. Um, it was just like a small group of people in Minnesota. Um, and I later found out that 
the girl who got first place was like number two in the country for speed ice climbing. And she beat me by half a second. And when I realized that, I was like, okay, you know, maybe this is something that I could pursue if I trained for it. And if I, you know, if I really enjoy it, I'm going to kind of try and do this. Um, so a few months later, uh, the American Alpine Club posted that, um, you know, you could apply for the USA ice climbing team. And me just being like the competitive go-getter person that I am, also having no business being on this team, uh, I applied. I just threw my name in the mix. Um, and to my surprise, a few weeks later, I found out that I had made the team. Um, and I also found out that there's two different disciplines in ice climbing for com competition. So I had done the speed ice climbing um, as seen here. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's usually 12 to 15 meters of ice, uh, completely vertical, and it's climb it as fast as you can um, under any means necessary. Um, and it's on top rope. Um, so that I had done once. Uh, and then the other aspect of it was dry tooling. Um, and, you know, what the heck is dry tooling? I had no idea, uh, but I had to learn because I had made this team, which I found out in October. And in December, I was leaving to travel around the world to compete in like the Olympics of ice climbing. Um, so I had a couple months to learn dry tooling. Um, let's see. So this is dry tooling. Um, it's like ice climbing without ice. Um, so it's a lot more technical, it's very difficult, um, and you're still using the axes, and in World Cup competitions, you've got the crampons on your feet, so you're kicking into plywood um, instead of the ice. It's very gymnastic, usually it's overhanging, um, and so this presented a challenge to me because I, up to that point, had not done a lot of bleeding, rock, or ice climbing. Um, still to this day, it terrifies me. And I was leaving in a couple months to go compete in the World Cup in something one that I'd never done and two that absolutely terrified me. Um, so I started, you know, entering some local competitions and I built a climbing wall in my backyard to start getting some practice. Um, you know, so I entered these competitions and did really poorly. It did not go well. Um, dry tooling is not easy to learn. <laughs> so I, you know, got back up, entered another competition and did not do well. <laughs> um, you can see here, I'm like trying to jump to this trapeze thing over here and completely missed. Um, and so I kind of beat myself up over it a lot. Um, you know, I had a lot of imposter syndrome that I was struggling with. Like, surely there's someone that deserves to be on this team more than I do. Um, and so, you know, I was about to leave for the World Cup and not really feeling confident in myself. You know, my first season of World Cups. Speed climbing went okay, um, but for dry tooling, I never never made it past the third clip in any competition, um, and they clipped the first two for you, so didn't go well. Um, <laughs> another falling picture. I, <laughs> I enjoy these. Um, but with that being said, like, I tried to look at the first season as a learning year. Um, I knew realistically, you know, I've been doing this for less than a year, um, you know, all these girls I'm competing against have been doing this their whole life. Um, so I knew that I wasn't going to make the podium. And so I just tried to look at it as a learning experience to kind of take that pressure off and to see, like, what can I take from this? How can I grow um, so I can train to become a better athlete for next year? Um, so heading into my second season, uh, I had to decide how much do I want to invest in this? You know, it takes a lot of time and money and energy. And I've got other things going on in my life, too. You know, I'm working full-time. I'm in grad school. Um, you know, on these trips, like the World Cup itself, like you're traveling around the world for weeks. Um, and I had to decide, do I want to train every day while I'm traveling and, like, eat really healthy? Or do I want to enjoy being in Russia or China, like these places that I may never get to go to again? Um, and, like, eat the foods and go sightseeing and maybe not worry as much about being super healthy and um, training while I'm competing or while I'm in between competitions. Um, and so this year, before I went into the World Cup, I really had to talk with myself about, you know, what do I want to get out of this? What are my goals? You know, why am I even doing this? Um, and I decided that I wanted to be proud of the climbs that I was doing. I didn't necessarily care about the ranking that I was getting. Again, I'm still so new with this. Um, but I just wanted to, like, get off the wall and be happy with how I climbed. Um, so with all of that, I started training, like, in any way that I could. So I found playgrounds with monkey bars, um, you know, that I would just 
go on a jog and like try to do some figure fours. This is a move that we would do. This is called a figure four and a figure nine um, that we do with the ice axes in our hands. Um, kind of like a resting position, also a good way to move, you know, side to side or up and down. Um, and so I kind of, I also uh, started training in my backyard. Um, I hope my landlord doesn't done this call. I don't think he would appreciate this very much, but <laughs> to really just like try to find ways that I could train um, in between school and work. And, you know, with this better attitude, I think about it and, you know, this kind of better insight on how to train, um, I started doing really well in competitions. Um, I think my slides are out of order, but this is a photo of us tobogganing in Switzerland, um, going back to like enjoying the trip versus just training the whole time. Um, the Russian team, they do not do this. They go on team runs and exercise between competitions, which might be why they win every competition, but <laughs> look at how much fun we had. <laughs> um, so I started doing well in competitions this year, and that was just like a huge thing for me, like not that I cared about winning, but just being proud, like, I look so happy in that photo. Like, that's so cool. Um, so just like being happy with how things were going and how I was progressing. Um, you know, I'm not putting up first ascent in any new mixed lines. I'm not making the podium at World Tufts, uh, but baby steps. Um, so this year at the World Cup, I competed in China, South Korea, and Switzerland, um, and then a couple of local competitions in Russia. And it went a lot better. Um, instead of falling, you know, at the first quick draw that I had to clip, I was making it to like the ninth or tenth quick draw. And instead of falling because of silly mistakes, I was um, timing out. So you get four to six minutes to do a climb uh, for dry tooling. Um, and I was, you know, making it a lot higher and not falling due to silly mistakes. Um, so this season just felt a lot better from a climbing standpoint. I think the positive attitude really played into that. Um, this is uh, another photo of speed climbing. Uh, so this wall is about 15 meters tall. I think I climbed it in 17 seconds, um, which is okay for a World Cup. Uh, the fastest girls are doing it in six to seven seconds. It's like you blink and it's done. Um, it's absolutely insane to watch. And here's just a couple of structures um, that we've competed on. This is in South Korea, uh, really cool structure. They're hoping to host the first uh, Winter Olympics that will have ice climbing, which who knows when that'll be, hopefully soon. But uh, yeah, they're really pushing for Winter Olympics there. Uh, this was the structure in China. And then some of you may have been there. This is the structure that we had in Denver last winter. Um, we didn't have that competition this winter, uh, but we're hoping to again next year. Um, so we'll see how things shake out. Um, yeah, and this is in Switzerland. This is the, the last uh, iconic World Cup this season. Um, so after all the World Cups, after the competitions are over, we have a big athlete party. Um, so yeah, this is everyone like we're all friends. It's not really like my country versus your country and, you know, everyone's helping each other and getting each other beta and wanting each other to succeed. Um, we're all friends outside of the competition realm. Um, you know, sometimes like the French team will come stay at my house or I'll go stay at their house um, in France. And so it's really cool just to like build those connections around the world um, and like have places to stay and people to climb with outside of the competition season. So I think this photo really speaks to the friendships that are built in competing in the World Cup. So with that, I realized my chat box disappeared. I hope you didn't have questions in the middle of that. Here we go. So yeah, do you guys have questions? Um, I got one, Lindsay. If anyone else participating, um, also please feel free to put your video on if you feel comfortable doing that. And um, definitely feel free to interact with Lindsay and other, and other participants here. As some of you might be um, you know, new to ice climbing like me, or some of you might have some good knowledge to contribute as well. Um, but Lindsay, I was curious, are there any other Coloradans on the USA team for ice climbing? Yeah, there's a bunch of us. Um, so let's see. So there's a bunch that are up in Boulder. Um, 
someone who lives up there named Tyler, he recently opened a gym called the Ice Coop, which is an indoor dry tooling training facility. Super fun. I highly recommend checking it out, even if you're not a climber or an ice climber. Um, you can rent all the gear for pretty cheap. And then a day pass is like 10 bucks. And there's always someone there that um, can show you how to do it, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, I'd say most of us are in Colorado. There's a few in Washington. Uh, there's a little group of people in Minnesota, Wisconsin, and then a few on the East Coast. So we're kind of spread all over, which makes it difficult to train or like do team bonding activities. Um, you know, sometimes we'll do a Zoom call kind of like this and chat about stuff about the team. Um, but yeah, I'd say a good chunk of the teams in, in Colorado. Cool. And then Keegan asks, what is the most important exercise movement for ice or mixed climbing training? Um, anything that works back muscles. I mean, with rock climbing, it's really like, you know, the small finger muscles that are doing a lot of the work. But with ice climbing, like every hold is a jug because you're holding onto the ice axes. Um, so having a strong core and strong back muscles is really important. Um, I like doing figure fours on anything that I can, uh, which is that video that I showed you a few slides ago. Um, that's just a good way to kind of like work the core and work the arms at the same time, work the back. Um, so yeah, I would say that's the most important exercise. Um. I always have questions, Lindsay, so I'll keep going. Um, what are you doing right now during this pandemic to still train? Obviously, you're not out in the field, um, and we're all at home a lot more. And I'm, I find myself struggling. So I'm curious what a, you know, a USA ice climber is doing during this time. Yeah, um, I'm not doing a lot, honestly. <laughs> um, grad school is keeping me super busy. I just got a puppy a few weeks ago. Um, I've got a fellowship through grad school and working full time. So like all these things aren't allowing for a lot of time to train. Um, so I'm kind of just taking a break right now. I'm still doing some pull ups in the backyard. I'm doing a lot of running now. Um, a lot for me, not a lot by anyone else's standards, but running more um, just to kind of stay in shape. Um, I do have a climbing wall that I built in my backyard uh, specifically for ice climbing. Um, you can put crampons on, use the ice axes and kick into the wall. Um, so I need to, need to do some work on that and reset it, but hopefully I can get around to that one this weekend. What is the puppy's name? The puppy's name is Cedar. Um, David, can you bring the puppy? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got a question. What would be the best piece of advice you'd give a new ice climber? Um, don't be afraid of it. I mean, a lot of people look at it or keep, like I tell people at ice climb, they're like, oh, that's so extreme. Like, that's so dangerous. And how do you do that? And why do you do that? And you know, it is dangerous. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. Um, but on ice park like Ure or Lake City, for example, um, it's pretty safe if you're with people that know what they're doing. That's another piece of it. Um, definitely go with people that know what they're doing or hire a guide. Um, but once you, you know, get the tools in your hands, get the crampons on, it's kind of just like climbing a ladder, you know, it's like hand, hand, foot, foot, like it's not, ice climbing itself is not as technical, I think, as rock climbing can be. Um, mixed climbing definitely is uh, when you're climbing on rock. Um, but yeah, the ice, don't be afraid of it. It's super fun. I've seen a lot of people that are terrified and they try it and they're like, oh my gosh, that was amazing. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't as scary as they thought it was going to be. Um, and then we've got a question, when do the major competitions take place? Um, so local competitions will start October, November. Um, there's a few around the US. We're really hoping to get more competitions, um, kind of like a series of competitions to qualify for the team. Um, and then the Ice Climbing World Cup starts in December. And depending on how many World Cups there are, it'll go through to February. Um, so that's six weeks, eight weeks, 10 weeks that you're taking off of work or whatever you're doing to go do these competitions. Um, so the World Cups are typically in Russia, China, Korea, Italy, France, Switzerland, and then the US or Canada. Um, and when, there's, when they ship between um, continents, they put a week in between. So it was like Russia, and then a down week, and then China, and then a down week, and then Switzerland. And it's like not really enough time to come home, um, it just doesn't make sense financially or like jet lag wise. 
And so we're staying out there. And so, you know, this year I did three World Cups and I was gone for six or seven weeks out of the U.S. Um, so, like I said, it's a huge time commitment. It's not really sustainable. Um, unless you're getting first place, you're not first through third. You're not taking any money home. Um, so it's like a huge huge sacrifice you know I probably spent fifteen thousand dollars between airfare and competition fees and gear and tools um and like I'm not getting any money out of it I've got a couple sponsorships that give me peanut butter or puppy jackets um but it's not it's not a job I don't think it ever will be uh, but it's something that I love doing and for now that outweighs um the cost of it but yeah it's hard when you're working a lot of the girls I compete against they don't work or they climb for their job so they're climbing every day they're training every day um that's why i'm kind of like i'm happy with where i'm at i don't think i'm ever going to podium but i'm happy because you know i'm working and doing these other things outside of that so it's all about balance that's that's really cool that actually you kind of got into one of my other questions i had um so you it sounds like you look like your own airfare you are kind of responsible for your own logistics of the travel no one's doing that for you what was the question? I'm sorry, you broke up. Oh, oh sorry. Um, you kind of hinted at it, but you have to book your own airfare and you're responsible for figuring out your own travel and itinerary and logistics and all that. Yeah, that was something I was really surprised about the first year. It was like, I got an email saying I was on the team and then I got an email at the date of the first competition. And I was kind of waiting like, hey team, when are we going to book our, our flights and our buses and our hotels? And it's just, there's none of that. Um, this, this past year was a little bit better. We kind of got together as a team a little bit more um, to plan our travel together. But that first year, it was just like, here's the day, and like show up in Russia and be ready to compete. And like, I had no idea what gear to bring, how to train for it, how much it was going to cost, um, how much the jet lag was going to affect me. So yeah, that first year was like totally a wash, just a learning experience. Um, and we do not get any funding. Um, people are always surprised that we don't get paid, um, but there's not money coming into the sport. Um, like people aren't paying to spectate it yet. Um, and other countries that typically podium like Russia or China or Korea, uh, they, their government pays them to compete. And so they've got towers in their cities, like in Moscow and in Seoul that they train on. They've got a bunch of gyms all over the place that they train in. And the people who are setting the routes for the World Cup competitions live there and are setting the routes that they practice on they've got a huge advantage over people here who just build 10 foot climbing walls in their backyard and aren't really getting like that vertical experience. Um, so yeah, we've got some handicaps, but I think the sport's moving in the right direction. How many are on Team USA? Are there sponsors for the team or just individuals? So there are six males and six females that are um, allowed to compete at each given competition. And so we've got kind of like our main crew and we've got some alternates because um, not everyone can go travel for that much time. Um, so some people will kind of switch in and out for competitions. Um, and we don't have any team sponsors. It's something we are talking about trying to do. Uh, we realize it's probably not going to be Black Diamond sponsoring our entire team. It's probably going to be like Jiffy Peanut Butter or something. Um, so we're, we're trying to figure out some different avenues for that. Um, but yeah, for now, it's just individuals. Um, you know, it's really the people who are putting up first ascents and are putting out like engaging content on social media. Um, so that's kind of how that goes. I'm kind of on their own for that. And I got a peanut butter sponsorship late recently, so I'm super excited about that. <laughs> um, Lindsay, you obviously are doing grad school. What are you hoping to study and um, do after you graduate from your program? I have no idea. I am someone who's been winging it my entire life. I've never had a plan for anything. Um, <laughs> so even doing grad school is kind of a big decision. Um, I knew I wanted to shift into the outdoor industry. I was in science before. I was doing field work. Um, and so, you know, spending time outside, but it kind of sucked. Um, so, you know, I'm shifting to outdoor industry. So the program I'm in is an outdoor industry MBA, which is a new program out of Western Colorado University. Um, and it's completely online, which makes it somewhat doable working and training. 
Um, but as far as what I want to do afterwards, I don't totally know. So that's up in the air. And where do I like to train? That's a difficult question. Um, for speed ice climbing, it's hard to train for because you need like perfectly vertical ice. And anywhere in Colorado that has that, it's kind of bad ethics to go and like run laps on beautiful WI5 ice climbs um, and like hog it um, and like, you know, hack up all the ice. So that's very difficult to train for. So this past year, I actually didn't train at all for that. Uh, my last time, before I went to the World Cup, the last time I had done speed ice climbing was the World Cup the year before. Um, so just like running and stuff maybe helps. But again, kind of just wing that. Um, and as far as training for dry tooling, I really like going to Vail. Um, there's a lot of good routes out there. It's called the amphitheater. Um, not a lot of like really easy stuff, I guess. I think everything's hard. I'm still new at it. Um, but other people might think there's easy stuff there. Um, yeah, like doing backcountry ice climbing isn't really training for speed or competing. And so I kind of haven't had a lot of time to do that this past couple of years. Um, you know, I've been training to compete, which is, like I said, very different. Um, so I guess the best place to train is the ice coop, which is in Boulder. Um, it's just like the most realistic simulation of competing with the, the plywood walls that you can kick into. It's like a bouldering gym, but for ice climbing. Ooh, my next goal in the outdoors, any major objectives on the radar? Um, not right now. I mean, I got back from the World Cup, so that was my big focus was training for that. And I was going to try to hit some cool wars and do some backcountry ice climbing uh, once my competition season was over. Um, you know, I also don't want to do a lot of backcountry stuff before the season and get injured. So I'm pretty cautious before the season. Um, but now, like, we can't go do these things outside right now safely and legally. So, um, things are kind of on hold right now, but with school and grad school or grad school and work, I'm kind of okay with that. It's it's hard to balance being an athlete, doing school and work. And so I think kind of having no pressure of having objectives in the outdoors right now is like kind of what I need. Um, but in the future, I want to get better at leading ice. I, I haven't really done a whole lot of leading ice, to be honest. Um, objectives, I want to place higher at competitions. I want to be I want to progress every year. Um, I know I'm probably never going to podium, but I want to get closer that direction. Uh, this year I placed 11th in the world for speed ice climbing. I missed 10th place by 0 0.05 seconds, and 10th place was my goal. <laughs> so <laughs> just got to be 0 0.05 seconds faster at any one of the competitions, and maybe I'll hit that top 10 mark. Um, for someone who has never been ice climbing, what would you recommend as a first step to try it? Uh, definitely hire a guide. I mean, it's like I said, it's very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing or if your ropes aren't set up right or if you're kind of using the wrong technique. Um, and you can rent gear. Uh, the CMC has like intro to ice climbing clinics and demonstrations and classes. Um, so I would check out that option first, to be honest. Um, and, you know, it's kind of a lot of barriers to entry with ice climbing. The gear is expensive. Like it's hard to get to some of these places. It can be expensive to hire a guide. Um, so yeah, I would, I would check with the CMC about some intro to ice climbing classes that they have. And let's see, are there competitions in Colorado or nearby? Yes. Um, the big competition in Colorado, I guess there's two. Uh, City Rock is down in Colorado Springs. That's an indoor climbing gym. Um, let me see if I can share my screen one sec. This is City Rock. Uh, so that competition is super fun. A lot of people show up to that one. A lot of pros show up to that one, but also it's friendly for new people too. Um, they also have classes and clinics on how to get into dry tooling. And then the other big competition in Colorado. I wonder if I can stop this. Your screen didn't share, Lens. Oh, okay. Uh, So this is the, the City Rock competition. Uh, again, it's an indoor climbing gym, um, and it's really fun to watch, really high energy. A lot of people show up to that one. 
And then the other competition is in Ure, Colorado. Uh, that one also brings in a lot of pros. Uh, this year they had a bunch of pros that came from Russia actually and just like swept competition. Um, but that one has a speed component as well. And so there's two ice climbs right next to each other that are about 100, 150 feet tall right next to each other. So you are, it's a duel. So you're climbing against someone else and it's speed. So you go to the top, you get lowered down, you switch and you immediately climb again. So it's like 200 plus feet of climbing um, in a matter of seconds and it's exhausting. Uh, so that one's super fun. And then I think those are the only competitions in Colorado right now. Again, we're trying to get more, but it's a huge liability for climbing gyms to have axes inside. Um, it, it's just very difficult. You know, there's not a lot of people who compete, and so we need more people to get into the sport, um, you know, before we can really grow it. I'm trying to find my chat box here. Lindsay, is that liability you just referenced? Is that why more indoor gyms don't have it? Because I've always been curious about that. I, I knew some Yeah. But. Yeah, I don't like totally know. I mean, I'm guessing liability is a huge part of it. I mean, if a little kid is climbing and an axe falls from the sky, like that's not good for anybody. Um, so it's not a very popular thing for indoor climbing gyms at the moment. Um, but the ice cube in Boulder, like I said, is a really great resource. And City Rock does actually allow dry tooling um, for a few months over the winter. And so you can see in the background here, there's like these black squares behind some of the holds. So those are all dry tool holds. Um, so they do allow, I think, top roping of some dry tool routes over the winter. And I was hoping to make it down there to do that this winter, but did not. So, and now they're closed. <laughs> so yeah, they've got some crushers down there that I think are helping set those routes. So they're, they're pretty fun. Um, besides Ure, like where, where are some of the hot spots that you like climbing in Colorado that you, in normal times, you'd be going to this weekend or next weekend? Yeah. Um, Vail on top of being a really good spot for dry tooling also has a ton of good ice climbing. And Ure, again, like you can't beat the ice park. It's so accessible. You can set up top ropes really easily. I'm a top rope hero. I love it. Um, so I really like going to Ure. Uh, there's a lot of good backcountry stuff there too, but again, it's a little bit more committing. Uh, you need to have partners who are proficient at leading and avalanche awareness. And another spot I like to go is Rocky Mountain National Park. Again, that's really committing. Um, you know, I did, did my first like big backcountry ice climb there this winter before I left the World Cup. And I think our approach was five miles each direction. Uh, and the climb is very low angle, very moderate, but I like had a moment of panic and we like wrapped off and left. It was just terrifying. You know, something happened out there. Like that's it. There's no cell service. Um, we were in a blizzard and anyway, so I haven't done a lot of backcountry yet, but someday. Uh, Keegan asked, mental game, how do you get past the fear? That is a great question. Um, I think there's a phrase, something like train, like you compete or something. I don't do that and I need to. Um, when I'm in competitions, that fear of leading just goes away. I don't know why or how, uh, but even to this day, if I were just to go to City Rock and try to do this climb, I would be terrified. I would take at every single click draw. Um, I don't know what it is, but in competitions, it just, it turns off. So I just need to find more competitions, I guess, because that's, that's where the real training goes down is when I'm in that mindset. And it's scary, like at Vail, there's like all the dry tooling areas that we get or that like people develop outside are all the areas that are too choppy or loose for rock climbers to climb at, which means it's extra dangerous because you can be, you know, hanging from your tools on a rock and it's so flaky, it'll peel off the wall and it could knock out your belayer or someone else who's hanging out on the ground. Um, so like at Vail, for example, when you're walking up the trail for the approach, there's a big block like the size of a car and it's got an anchor on it so that used to be at the top of this climbing area and now it's like tumbled down the hill and there's an anchor like that someone has clicked into to lower off of um so that's another huge fear of climbing outside you know how do you know if you take a whip that that 
bolt or quick draw is not just gonna like yank out of this loose rock. So that's why I like competing because it's <laughs> generally pretty safe. Um, you know, the routes that are designed the route so that if you fall, it's not gonna be too dangerous. Um, I don't know if I'm still sharing, but like right here, that was a clean fall. Um, but actually, so I fell right here and like completely flat backed and I looked up and my tool was still dangling right above my head. Um, and it like, you know, fell and nearly hit me in the face. So a lot of objective ha hazards in, in dry tooling and ice climbing. And you kind of just have to not think about it like while being aware of all of these things at the same time, if that makes sense. Um, you know, for example, in this pose, if I were to have crampons on, which I often do um, when I'm upside down like that, it's like when you're doing the figure fours, the, the crampons could slice your wrist or your rope or, you know, like the back of your heel. Um, so there's like a lot of moving parts to be aware of. Any blood drawn yet from falls? Not from falls. I don't lead enough to take very many falls. I'm just like, hey. Um, but I have had ice chunks fall while I'm ice climbing and like hit me in the face. Actually, my first day ice climbing, uh, my mom tried to talk me out of it. She was not a fan of me ice climbing. Um, so my first day, I had an ice chunk fall and hit me in the temple and I came home with blood all over my face. Uh, and I was just like, mom, I love this. Like, this is my sport. Uh, and she was not excited. Now she supports me, um, but she did not at first. And actually, really the only blood drawn outside of that, um, I will show you, is my screen still sharing? Yeah, okay. Um, so in these speed competitions, we have these really sharp hooks that we use. It's not a regular ice axe. And we file it down to be like a needle, so it's super sharp. Um, so a lot of like really professional dry toolers won't even do speed ice climbing because it's so dangerous. Um, you know, you can be climbing, and the tools can skate through the ice and like go through your arm or your leg. Um, and it's like, it's so sharp that it'll puncture pretty deep. And so in my last competition in Switzerland, I actually managed to put both tools through my thigh during finals. Um, but the embarrassing part is that I wasn't climbing. I was handing my phone to my boyfriend to take a video of my last climb of the season. And I dropped it. And like, just my first reaction was to try to pick up the phone and both ice tools just punctured straight through my thigh. Um, like as I was walking up to the wall to climb. Um, so <laughs> that wasn't great, but yeah. I haven't had any real injuries from the sport yet. <laughs> Lindsay, do you ski or backpack? Or Go camping a lot. What are your kind of crossover outdoor sports that you do here in Colorado? Yeah, so I keep buying snowboard passes, like the Icon Pass or the Epic Pass, and then I never use it because I'm too terrified of someone running into me and getting injured. Uh, so I really want to get into backcountry skiing uh, so I can, one, have like more access to ice climbs. So a lot of ice climbs are pretty far away, so having skis would make them more accessible. Um, you know, I do some rock climbing, uh, but that's not really for training. It's more just a social thing to get out with friends and be outside. Um, I like photography, trail running, hiking, 14ers, all the good stuff, mountaineering. Um, yeah, it's hard to balance training for the World Cup, which, like, for a lot of people, that's their main focus. But for me, you know, I want to snowboard. I want to go hiking. I want to go running and do all these things that Colorado has to offer. Um, so... It's hard to balance it all. <laughs> um, do I do anything specific for injury prevention in my training? Hey, it. <laughs> Sorry, you're a puppy peed. <laughs> um, you know, I try to stretch before I climb. Um, you know, I'm always wearing a helmet in competitions for speed climbing, at least. We'll be wearing knee pads. Um, some people have started wearing like Kevlar sleeves so that you don't put a tool for your arm or your leg. There's like leg shields too. Um, I'm not a very preventative person, so I probably should do some more like PT or something. Again, I'm just someone who kind of wings it a lot of the time and just keeps my fingers crossed that I don't get hurt or that I win. Um, <laughs> so I should implement some more of that into my training. <laughs> Yeah, 
family. Yeah, I asked you to bring them over here. Like, <laughs> we're working on getting the puppy over here. <laughs> we we got to get the puppy, but yeah, I think everyone wants to see your new puppy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One puppy coming right up. Oh, this is Cedar. He <laughs> sounds like a garbage disposal when I hold him. He's not growling, he's just making puppy noises. <laughs> so. Cedar. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, she's keeping me busy. <laughs> Oh, there we go. <laughs> well, does anyone have any more questions? Okay. Can you give us a rundown of specific gear or tools that you need? Yeah. Um, so just for like a day at the ice park, um, I think like the biggest crux is mountaineering boots that are crampon compatible. Uh, you can borrow ice axes from a friend, you can borrow crampons, but the boots are really like the biggest crux. Um, and again, you can use those um, REI or uh, Rock and Riesel or Don and Uri, there's a bunch of those gear shops. Um, so mountaineering boots, crampons, uh, which are like, you know, the spiky things that go on the bottom of your feet that your feet can stick into the ice. Um, waterproof clothing, uh, I know it sounds counterintuitive since ice, but a lot of the times um, it can be milky and it can be really wet doing it, which is not fun when it's cold out. Um, layering is a huge thing. Um, not wearing like a big snowboarding jacket, like you want to have like base layers and waterproof layers and insulating layers that you can kind of peel off and put on pretty quickly. Um, what else? Um, Gloves that have, you know, individual fingers for ice climbing is really important. I, for my first year, made the mistake of wearing, like, giant lobster mittens, which are not good for dexterity for, like, putting in ice crews or even just climbing in general. Um, so I got made fun of a lot when I posted photos of me wearing lobster mittens ice climbing. Um, definitely always wear a helmet, even if you're belaying, even if you're watching from afar. Uh, ice fall is a huge thing. It happens all the time. Um, so I think in... In this photo, if you look closely back here, you can see like a microwave sized chunk of ice falling to the ground to these unsuspecting victims below. Um, so that's that's always pretty scary. Um, let's see, oh, you can see my, my big lobster gloves in there. Um, harness, um, some harnesses have, are compatible for having what they're, what call, they're called ice clippers. Um, so you can kind of hook your tools to your harness not super important if you're just top roping at the park. Um, and then really important that's how you take into the ice and climb. And let's see. What are my favorite tools for dry tooling? I will show you. Hold on one sec. Okay, so these are the Camp Caffeine Extremes. I really like them for ice climbing. They're kind of like the best all around for that. Um, they're good for kind of like outdoor mixed climbing as well. But once I got into competing, I realized that this handle is not good for competing. Um, it's really only got room for one hand position here. And a lot of times you need to switch. This isn't going to make any sense just showing you, but you kind of need like two hands worth of space here to switch. Um, so when I was in Russia this winter, I picked up these, um, meaner, leaner, a lot lighter. Um, and the picks were made with like Russian tank steel, steel from Russian tanks, which is like pretty cool. Um, but the handle shape is super important. So now I've got that double grip and then this grip here. Um, so that was a huge game changer. And I actually bought these two days before my first World Cup this season, which like no other athlete in the world would probably change their entire setup two days before competing in the World Cup. Um, but it was kind of like an all or nothing move because um, I was pretty frustrated with this handle. And so 
just picked up a pair of these from a lovely woman in Russia and learned how to use them on the fly at the competition. That was the first time I climbed, climbed on them was in the World Cup. So it was a learning experience, but luckily it was a good one. <laughs> so that could have gone pretty poorly. And I guess I'll show you the speed tools too. Got those handy. So these are the speed tools I was talking about. Um, a lot lighter than regular ice climbing tools. Um, very, very sharp. These are pretty dull right now, but that can still draw blood. So you don't want to put that through your arm or your leg. It's not pretty. All right, any other questions? No. Okay. Uh, ooh, any tricks you learned that make movements more efficient on the ice? Things to avoid. Yes. So in this picture, you can see that I'm doing a starfish shape. That is bad technique. This was my second day ice climbing. Um, you want to be in an A shape. You want to have your feet wide and your hands kind of like straight above you. Because um, when you're out like this and your feet are out wide, you do what's called a barn door. And so like, you know, comes off or if your leg comes off, like you kind of just peel back and you kind of fall off. Um, so there's a phrase, swing like you screw and step like you poo. Um, I'll let you kind of think that one through, but that one's been really helpful in remembering technique. Um, more efficient. Yes. Another thing I'm doing wrong in this photo is I'm locked off like this, which is super exhausting. Uh, you're wasting a lot of energy doing that. And so a better technique is to just hang by your arms and use your bones and you're not wasting um, your muscle energy that way. You're just hanging from your bones. Um, another thing that's really important is shaking out very frequently, more frequently than, than you would expect. Um, if you don't shake out, uh, the blood will kind of drain away from your fingertips. And when you're done climbing, um, your fingertips are cold from ice climbing. You know, like the blood came, went away from your fingers from being above your head. And when you bring your arms back down, that blood comes rushing back and you get what's called the screaming barfies, which is exactly what it sounds like. Um, you either scream or barf, or if you're me, you cry like a baby, which happens all the time. It's not fun, but it's funny for everyone else who's in the room to watch. Um, but it's awful to experience. So shake out. Uh, and don't over grip. That's something that I need to work on is I'm like death gripping my tools, wasting a lot of energy again. Um, you really don't even need like a full hand around it. You really can just like hang like that. It doesn't need to be like a death grip like that. So that's one of the many, many things I'm working on. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of little techniques. I mean, even if you have bad technique, you can probably still make it up the wall just fine. But as far as going for longer, taller, steeper, more technical climbs. Um, technique is really important, and it's usually the first thing to go. Uh, when I get scared and tired, my technique goes out the window, but it should not, because that makes it more hard. All right, cool. Well, thank you guys for coming to CNC's first online university. Um, you can see more on the YouTube channel and social pages. Um, I think there's going to be many more of these as we continue to be um, sheltered in place at home. And please consider donating to the CMC so they can keep putting on things like this now that kind of the outdoor trips are out the window for the foreseeable future. So, yeah, thank you for coming. I love telling my story and I love just sharing the passion for ice climbing with everyone. And I hope you guys got something out of this. So, yeah. Thanks so much, Lindsay. That was awesome. Yeah, anytime. Thanks, Linz. That was great. We appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Bye, everyone. See ya.